So, last time we have seen few examples of a complete and incomplete metric space and one of that example were a rational number q is an incomplete metric space in R with a usual topology. But this rational number has a characteristic that the closure of this is R that is it is a dense in R. So, this suggests a way to convert an incomplete metric space to a complete metric space and this requires the definition or the concepts of the isometric mappings. So, before going for the result for completion, we will see the how to define the isometric mappings. Isometric mapping, isometric spaces. Let x d and y d, x d and y d were we say two metric spaces. and T is a mapping from metric space x d to metric space y d bar. Now, this mapping T is said to be isometric is said to be isometric or an isometry. if it preserves if it preserves the distances that is the meaning of this is that the distance of t x t y under the metric d bar is the same as the distance between x and y then we say this mapping T is an isometric or isometry from one metric to another metric space. Okay. Now, in addition to this, if the mapping T, if in addition to this, in addition to this, the mapping T the mapping T is also 1 1 and on 2 that is a bijective mapping. 1 1 map on to mapping from x to y then we say 2 metric species two metric spaces are iso are isometric spaces are isometric that is a mapping from one matrix to another matrix which is one one onto and preserve the metric also then we two matrix are said to be isometric matrix okay so, basically when we have a isometric mapping or two spaces are isometric, then the nature of the elements may different. Here the elements points are different, here the points are different, but what is the important part is there is a one to one correspondence, one one on two mapping T and if we pick up any two point here and find out the distance the corresponding images here will have the same length distance here between T x and T y. So, whatever the properties regarding the convergence, cochiness, etcetera required that retains 
all the property which involves the metric concepts will remain the same. So, they are basically considered as a carbon compete to each other. Though the points are different, but so far the properties, metric properties are concerned, they behave more or less the same sets. Okay, so, this is the one advantage of this one. Now, examples are say C C 0 1 and C A B. These are isometric spaces. You can define the mapping T. Suppose I define a mapping such that T goes to T minus A over B minus A. So, the transfer A to 0, B to 1. So, interval A B is transferred to 0 1 interval and this mapping is a 1 1 mapping on 2 mapping. Okay? And if we define the distance as the maximum distance, then you will see both will have the same distances. Okay? So, this map in 2 spaces are isometric spaces. Then another concept which we require is homeomorphism. Homeo, this is a new concept, homeomorphism, homeomorphism. A homeomorphism is a continuous continuous bijective continu continuous bijective mapping t from x to y whose inverse is continuous is continuous. It means the mapping from one metric space to another metric space which is 1 1 on 2 continuous and inverse is also continuous then such a mapping is called the homeomorphic mapping homeomorphic map homeomorphic mapping from one metrics to another and if this uh, two species are said to be homeomorphic species. Okay? The metric species x y x d by d y these are said to be by d are said to be homeomorphic metric species. Okay? Again here we give one pro example, say suppose I take R and 0, x is R, y is minus 1 to 1 and define a mapping T from this to this as x to 2 y with pi 10 inverse x. R can inverse way. X is a map R is a metric space under the usual metric. By is an open interval again is part of R and the same metric D X by we can define as the usual metric. Then if we define a mapping T which transfer X to 2 by pi 10 inverse X then minus infinity to infinity is transferred to minus 1 to 1. When x is minus infinity, 10 inverse minus, minus pi by 2, so this becomes minus 1 and when it is infinity, so when x tends to pi by 2, it goes to infinity, so it tends to 1. So, it is open interval minus 1 to 1. Now, this mapping T is a continuous mapping. Okay? When we take the inverse, what is the inverse? 
inverse will be equal to what? Pi by 2 tan x, tan of pi by 2 uh, by. So, this is the inverse mapping t inverse y. Suppose this is equal to y, is it not? So, we can write the inverse of mapping is t inverse y, okay. That, that will be equal to from here because this will be 2 over pi tan inverse x is y. So, we can write x equal to pi by uh, 2 by and tan of this. Clear? So, accordingly you can get again this is a continuous function. So, both t and t inverse t and t inverse are continuous. Okay? It is 1 1 1 2 mapping 1 1 1 2 continuous therefore, this is a Fermi ball. Now, one thing which we observed here in this that in case of the homeomorphic mapping, you are getting a mapping T from complete metric to an incomplete metric space. It means in case of the homeomorphic mapping is not required or is not necessary that only the complete metric will transfer to the complete metric. Okay? But in case of the isometric mapping, this is true. If the two spaces are isometric, then similar type of Cauchy sequences will behave in the other matrix and we have the corresponding properties of the matrix in same as in one or second. Okay? So, that is two difference. Now, the question is if suppose we have a incomplete matrix space, how to convert it into a complete matrix space and that is known as the completion of the matrix space. So, we def, uh, go for the completion as completion of a metric space. Here we will simply give a um, way okay, uh, how to end. Suppose we have a metric x d, x d be a metric space, be a an incomplete metric space be an incomplete metric space, then corresponding to this axis, then there exist a complete metric space complete metric space x delta which is equal to say x delta d delta this is say x the corresponding to each incomplete metric space there exists a complete metric space x delta which has a subspace which has a subspace w that is this is a subspace w which has a subspace w that is isometric that is isometric with x that is we can find out a mapping from x to w which is 1 1 on 2 and preserve the distance, preserve the distances. An isometric with x, which is isometric with x and it dense in x delta. That is w bar is equal to x delta. So, what is that a? If x be an incomplete metric space, then one can always find out a complete metric of x such that there will be a subspace w available in this space x z, which is isometric with x and this w is dense in x z. For example, if I take replace x by q as set of rational number, then corresponding to that q, we can always get a complete metric r, which has a subspace w that is q isometric with 
x that is q itself and closure of q is r. Okay? Now, this is unique corresponding to each x we get one and only one x except for isometry. It means this is a uh, that is okay. this space this space x z which you are getting is unique corresponding to each incomplete way we get one and only one x z except 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 for isometries. What do you mean by this is except for isometry means that is if we suppose there is another metric x head which is a completion of x then it has a w head isometric with this dense in it then these two species x head and x will also be isometric. So, we can say this space x head is unique except for isometry that is if x head is any complete metric space complete metric space having a dense subspace dense subspace w head isometric with x with x then x head and x delta are isometric that is the meaning of this we repeat again what we say that we are getting uh, suppose this is an incomplete metric space Okay. This is an incomplete metric space. What this result says that corresponding to each incomplete metric space, we can always find a complete metric space. Complete metric space in such a way that it has a w subspace w which is dense in it and isometric with x. Okay. And this space x delta which you get is unique except under isometry that is if there exist another metric x head which also which is also a complete metric space corresponding to x then this x head and x delta must be isometric must be isometric. So, that we can not get a different one because once you take the two spaces are isometric the elements may be of different nature, but their metric properties remains the same. So, that is why it will be unique always. Okay? That is clear. So, this one. <laughs> now, this almost completing we are uh, completed almost all the uh, concepts. Now, we will take a few here a uh, problems which gives you further emphasis on these concepts and one of them is the concept on separable matrix. So, we have one problem here. What this problem says that if x d, d is a separable metric space and by is a subspace of x, then by d wall is separable in the induced metric d wall. What this problem is that suppose we have x d, which is a given to be a separable metric space. Now, if I take a subset by subspace by of x, then what is the guarantee that this subspace 
under the restricted metric is also separable. Okay? But what this problem says that if we have a subspace, then this surface space has to be separable under the induced metric D bar. Induced metric means that even by restrict the D on by cross by, then it must be D bar. That is the distance of by 1 comma by 2 is the same as by 1 and by 2. So, bar by 1 and by 2 belongs to capital Y. If the points are in by 1 and points are in Y, then both these metric D bar and D will give the same distance. But if the points are in X, then these values may not be same. So, what it says is if X be a complete uh, is a separable metric space, then its subspace under the induced metric will also be separable. So, what is required to prove is that this by under the metric D bar must have a countable subset which is dense in by. Okay. So, let us see the proof line. It is given that X D be a separable metric space. It means there will be a set E, it has a countable subset E which is dense in this say suppose x 1, x 2, x n etcetera. This is the countable subsets, uh, countable subsets of x which is dense in x by definition. Okay. Now, if this set E is contained inside completely y, then our problem is solved because then E is also countable as well as dense in y. So, there is nothing to prove y will itself be as separable, but if the elements of E partly lies outside of the by that is some points are here, some are insides. Okay? Then you cannot say that E is can be treated as a countable dense subset of by. So, what we have to do is we have to find out the points in by a sequence of the points in by which is a dense sub which forms a dense subspace of by. So, our aim is to find a sequence by an m of the elements of by such that this is dense and countable. It is countable and dense in by. Okay? So, that is where how to get this one let us suppose this is our x d and here it is by. These are the points of x 1, x 2, x n. Here this is E which is x 1, x 2, x n and so on. Okay? Now, for a positive integer n, for a positive integer n, n m let us find out a ball centered at x n and with a radius say 1 by m. <coughs> this is 1 by m radius. Okay? So, we get a set u n m centered at x n and radius 1 by m. Around each point you are getting like this. Okay? of x 1, x 2, x n. Now, some of them will intersect by and some of them may not intersect also because it, because all the points are not inside by even they are not the boundary point also. So, with suitable n m you can get some of these say balls will definitely intersect. So, once they intersect you pick up the point from here say by 1, by 2, by n which is the common point of this ball as well as by. So, what we did is that around the point x n we have draw the ball okay, which centered 1 by m and this ball when it intersect with by okay, then you can pick up a point by n m. So, with x 1 you are drawing a ball with a radius 1 by m pick up a point by 1 m with x 2 you draw the ball 1 by m, pick up a point by 2 m. Now, this by 1 m by 2 m all may not be available. So, some may be in empty also set 
means which are so in that case you are not able to get but at least you can get a sequence by n 1 by 1 n by 2 m etc which a, you get a sequence like this by 1 m by 2 m and so on these are the points common in by as well as u n m is it correct this now these points if you remember these are basically the points in this ball centered at x n with a radius 1 by n and x 1 x 2 x n is already giving to be countable it means these balls are countable in number now some of the balls does do not intersect with by so remove those balls remaining ball will remain still countable therefore the by n by 1 m by 2 m etc this form a countable set agreed okay and these are the points of by is it correct so we get like this that first draw the ball then find out its intersection with by if it is not empty then pick up the point and then form a sequence and this sequence obviously be a countable set okay of by so this now we are now interested to show that this sequence is not only countable in by but also dense in by if i color black huh? okay this is also dense in by we wanted to show this is dense in by okay so how to prove the dense in by means if this is a set by this is our x and here this is by and these are the balls these are the balls okay like this where these by 1 by 2 by by 1 m by n m are situated okay now if you want this to be this points set is a dense in by it means you take any arbitrary point by okay so if we take any arbitrary point by in by if we draw a ball around the point by with the radius say r then this ball must contain this ball must contain at least some point of by nm then it becomes dense okay so let us pick, take a point by and a suitable radius r then draw the ball and pick up m so large so that this will satisfy the condition okay so, if I take a ball around the point by with a radius 1 by m, then since x1, x2, xn, these are dense in x, okay. So, they are also scattered in by. So, some of the x size will be available in this ball. Let one of these x size say xn, okay. Call it that point to be xn. So, let xn be a point available here with lies inside a ball centered by and radius 1 by m. So, x n will be this, but x n centered with radius 1 by m is a u m m. Okay, u n m. So, basically the intersection of by n m in u m is the element of by. So, by belongs to this class as well as x n. Okay. Now, let us take the distance from by to a point by n m. So, this will be equal to d of by x n plus d of x n x n by just triangular inequality. Now, x n belongs to this ball. It means its distance from by centered by any arbitrary point will remain less than 1 by m. So, this is 1 by m. This is also 1 by m. So, total becomes and since m is so large that it is r by 2. So, it becomes r. It means if we draw the ball around the point by with the radius r, then it includes the point by n m. Okay therefore by n m will be dense in this okay or you can say otherwise if you take by a by 1 by 2 by n draw the ball you can get a point arbitrary point by clear and this is arbitrary therefore by n m belongs to this ball centered by radius r hence this will be a dense okay so any subset subspace of a separable metric space is also separable under the induced metric clear 
I think it's clear or you need okay. So this. Now another results which are also important and that's first that's known as the Bayer's theorem. What this result says is that if suppose we have a metric space X D, this is our metric space X D and suppose there are finite number of dense open subsets means suppose D 1 is dense that is D 1 closure is X, D 2 is also dense, D n is also dense means there are so many dense space subspaces of X can be obtained. Now, what about the intersection of D i, i is 1 to n? Will this be also a dense in X? This is the question. Okay. One thing. Second one, if we take a countable number of dense sets of X and then find the countable intersection, whether this countable intersection say D 1, whether this will also be a dense set in X. So, these two questions are answered by Weyers. So, what Weyers told that whether X is a complete metric space or incomplete metric space, if there are finite number of the dense subspaces of X, then the finite intersection of those dense subspaces will also be a dense subset and these are open, dense open subset. These are dense open subsets, remember, huh? openness is also important. Okay? However, if I do not take X to be a complete metric space, then this result in general not true. This is true in general, but if we take an arbitrary intersection of the dense open subset of a metric space X, then the arbitrary intersection of the dense open subset need not be a dense in X. Okay? But if X to be a complete metric space, then this result will hold if X is complete. Okay? So, that is very interesting result in the sense that one can without any hitch take the sequence of the denseness, find out the intersection and it will guarantee that there will be a uh, dense subspace available that is it will be non-empty. <coughs> okay? We can always get the closure will be entire space X. So, that is fine. The proof runs like this. Let us take the finite first case when X is incomplete metric space and D 1, D 2, D n be a dense open subset of X. So, by the property each one closure will be X by this. Okay. Now, let us take a point X and R not a positive number. Draw the ball around the point X naught with a radius say R naught. Since D 1 is dense in X, so it means the point of X, this ball and the point of D 1 are very close because it is dense in X. So, we can find out identify a point say x 1 inside this ball which is the intersection of d 1 intersection u naught, okay? which is available because d 1 is dense and u naught is an open ball. So, we can find a point x 1 which is common to d 1 and u naught. Now, further d 1 is open, u naught is also open. So, intersection of the open set is open. So, it means we can draw the ball around the point x 1 with a radius suitable radius say r 1 which is totally contained inside it. So, we can get the ball x 1 by 1 which is totally contained inside it. Okay? Is it clear? Then once you have continued this process inductively take another. So, that at the nth step what you get it you are drawing a ball centered at x n minus 1 with a radius r n minus 1 and this ball has and the d n because it is dense. So, intersection part will be non-empty and it is open. So, it will in get a one point x n will be available and a ball u n around this which is totally contained inside it. Okay? So, continue this way. Now, let us take 
the x n plus 1 in this elements okay and then corresponding ball be def obtained u n plus 1 centered at x n burner and so on. Now, since x 1, x 2, x n these are the points in x r 1, r 2, r n suitably in this. So, if you find the intersection of these balls what happened? The intersection of these balls basically is contained in this uh, this intersection x naught will contain the point x n and intersection will be non empty. Because every time this ball you are getting again intersection. So, you are getting again ball which get the point x 2 similarly x n. So, when you take the intersection with u naught you will get a point x n available that is non empty. So, whether x is complete or incomplete hardy metal we get the intersection of the dense shafts open sides will remain dense. Okay, that is clear. Always be clear. In case if it is complete, if suppose x is a complete space, then even arbitrary intersection of the dense open side will be dense. So this we have seen. Suppose it is complete. Let us take a sequence x n and a r n the same procedure as we defined, but it is a decreasing nature and choose r m such that it is less than one by m. Okay. Now, let us pick up the two point in x n and x m in ball centered at x m and radius r n. Then what is the distance? This x n x m plus x m x n. Now, this is less than r m, this is less than r m to so 2 times r m and this will be less than 2 by m. So, when m is sufficiently large, this distance is tending to 0. It means the sequence x n is a Cauchy sequence, but x is complete. So, it must converge and converts to the point x in x. So, we are getting a point x which belongs to the closure. Okay. So, this belongs to closure means it is in the contained in d m u ball and from here one can say it belongs to the intersection hence this is not empty. Okay. So, we get the intersection of this is dense. Hmm? So, is it okay? So, this part will be clear. I think this is okay. I will just put it that this again, so that you can go through. Okay, this is the first sheets. Hmm? Clear? Then again, balls are obtained. Intersection, these, and this. End. So finite case is over, and then for the if x is complete sequence const find a sequence like previous way r n previously only restriction is this okay and then you can find out the points so that this is a Cauchy sequence and then limiting point is available so we get a sequence okay and once you get this then it belongs to the intersection so it will be arbitrary because x naught is arbitrary and r naught is also arbitrary. Therefore, this will be a dense set. Now, what is the if we are taking x to be an incomplete metric space, then this result does not hold good. It means in case of a incomplete metric space, the arbitrary intersection of the dense set need not be dense. So, this is like that. Suppose, we have a set x which is suppose I take the set q 1, q 2, q n of rational numbers x with metric induced by the usual metric one. set of rational number. So, it is an incomplete set. Okay. Now, let us find out a d 1, d 2, d n as x minus q n that is you are constructing d 1 as x minus q 1 d 2 as x minus q 2. So, basically this is the real line and here are this q 1, q 2, q n and so on. So, these are rational numbers in computer. Now, what we are doing is we are taking a d 1 where this portion is removed and rest of the things I am taking 
including all irrational points also because x minus q1 x is r x sorry x minus x is q1 q2 qn okay x minus this now this will be dense in open in x okay and it will be in uh, open in x and each intersection will be empty why it is empty because here is q1 is not available here q2 is not available so when you take the intersection part it will come out to be the empty set so this is the arbitrary intersection comes out to be empty not not a non empty set okay so we can conclude that in a complete metric space uh, in a if a complete metric space is a countable union of its subset then the closure of at least one such subsets must have non empty integer that's what it is okay so these two examples which though it is given in the form of the example but both are very interesting results and it will be used particularly the Weyers theorem it will be used okay now let's take few problems now where we can <laughs> give what is the equivalent matrix how to define the matrix suppose there are two sets of x is a one metric a space over which the two matrix are defined d1 in d2 then we have to compare this matrix suppose then how will you say that one mit with one matrix x d1 and with another matrix x d2 what is the difference whether any sequence if we take any sequence converging in with respect to one matrix whether it converges to the other matrix or not and vice versa or one way it is true or both ways true so this brings the concept of the stronger and weaker uh, uh, matrix spaces because once a set is fixed but the two different matrix are given then we can compare their their uh, properties by saying that whether it is a stronger matrix or weaker matrix and we define the stronger and weaker matrix is a matrix d is stronger than d dash if for any x and for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta such that the open wall central x and radius delta is under the metric d is contained in this what is the meaning of this let us see suppose this is a metric x with a metric d this is a metric x with metric d dash metric space we say d is stronger than d dash d dash is stronger than d it means if i take a point x belonging to x and draw the ball centered at x and radius delta open ball centered at x and radius delta under the metric d so basically this is the elements by whose distance from x y is less than delta this is the open ball okay and then draw the ball centered at x and with the radius f sin r under the metric d dash so this is the z such that d of z x is less than f sin r now these two balls are there centered at x and one is this another one is this okay this is radius now what he says is that if this ball is totally contained inside this ball f sin r ball Okay, this is the u d, this is the u d dash. Then we say this metric is stronger than this. Why? Because a ball which this ball contains this one, it means this behaves as a neighborhood of this. So, if any sequence converges in this metric, then that sequence has to converge under this metric. Okay. So, we can say in case of the stronger conversion, if x n converges to x, then x n has to converge in the q n. So, in rough sense you can say the two matrix are given, then d is said to be stronger than d dash, if a sequence x n converges in d must imply x n converges to d dash and a strong convergence implies the weak. If a sequence converges in the strong matrix, it has to converge in the weak matrix. 
Okay. So, that is the <coughs> okay. mm. now let us see this problems this the problem first is if A is a subspace of L infinity consisting of all sequences of 0 and 1, what is the induced metric? What is the induced metric? L infinity is the set of those sequences x which are bounded, is it not? Which are bounded and what is A? A is the sequence which are either 0 or 1, where x i is all 0 or 1. So, basically A is a subset of L infinity. What is the distance between this? Say, suppose I take A here, then what is the distance between A B in A? That is the supremum of x i i minus eta i and that will be 0 if A is equal to B and 1 if A is not equal to B, is it not? So, because if the terms of the sequence in A either 0 or 1, so supremum value will be either 0 if all terms are equal or if any at one point it differs the value will be 1. So, is it not a discrete metric? What is the discrete metric? If A is equal to B, the value of the discrete give 0 if an A differs B, the way under discrete it is 1. So, basically the over A, if I introduce a metric, a discrete metric, it will coincide with the induced metric of L infinity, does it not? So, the, what is the induced metric? Is that discrete metric, clear? Then second example is, hmm. so that the Cauchy Schwarz inequality implies this. What is the Cauchy Schwarz inequality? You will remember sigma x i i eta i i is 1 to n suppose is less than equal to sigma uh, x i i square under root sigma mod eta i square under root, is it not? Clear? Now, if I take eta i to be 1, then what is this? Is it not the left hand side? Sigma mod x i i square kallo 1 to n, take the square. Okay. So, what is the right hand side? This is sigma x i i square i is 1 to n and what is this? Each one is 1, so is it not n? So, you are getting this, okay. clear? So, we are getting this. Now, what he says is, hence or otherwise, so the metric space defined on this are equivalent metric. The two matrix D 1 and D 2 are said to be equivalent matrix if there exist if there exist constants if there exist constants alpha and beta such that d 2 x by is greater than equal to alpha times d 1 x by is less than equal to beta times d 2 x by. Let x d be a metric space, x d 1 and x d 2 be the metric spaces, means d 1 and d 2 are the two matrix defined on x. We said d 1 and d 2 are equivalent matrix strong and weaker is different, is equivalent matrix means this condition has to be satisfied. That is there exists constant such that d 2 x y lies between alpha times d 1 and beta times of d 1, sorry this is d 1. Okay? Clear? So, so, what it says is that if we take x to be R 2, x is equal to R 2 
two dimensional space and define that is the elements is x 1 comma x 2 and define a metric d 1 x by h 1 metric is or here x i 1 x i 2. So, let it be x i 1 x i 2. So, one way metric is defined as x i 1 is square x i square raised to the power half another metric is defined as the mod x i 1 plus mod x i 2. What he says is these two matrix will be equivalent matrix. It means if we are able to find alpha and beta, we are d 1 and d 2 satisfy this condition, then our problem is solved. Now, by the previous result, Cauchy's inequality, if I take n equal to 2, so what we get mod x i 1 plus mod x i 2 square is mod x i 1 plus mod x i 2 square is less than or equal to 2 mod x i 1 square plus mod x i 2 square, is it not? So, take the power half both side. So, what you get? If we take the power half, this will go and this, uh, this power will come. Now, is it not this one is under root 2 d 1 x by, is it not? And what is this? This is equal to d 2. So, one way it is true, beta comes out to root 2. Okay. Other way round is obviously true, other way since mod x i 1 plus mod x i 2, this is square, this is square power half, is it not always less than or equal to this? Clear? because if I square both side, then this side will be more. So, basically this is equal to what? This is equal to d 1 x y and this is equal to. So, combine these two. Okay. So, what we get? We get that d 2 lies between d 1 and d 2 with a suitable constant. Therefore, this matrix, these two matrix are equivalent matrix. Okay. And in fact, we can define any other matrix on R2 or Rn, all will be equivalent that we will see. Clear? So, this is another example which is interesting. Then, third example is denote the smallest R where B belongs to closure of this, and here you have to find the maximum value. What is the uh, determine the smallest R so that by belongs to closure? What is the closure property? The closure ball set of this such that distance between less than or equal to r. And so, you find the maximum because you, it will give the maximum of this fine t minus cos t and t belongs to over this interval. So, you find the maximum value and maximum value will come out to be root 2. Okay? So, this I think is now there are few more problems which I have written you can just have a look and that lead, do it later on. Okay? this B A B is not separable, this is one problem. Then another problem is the boundedness of a sequence does not imply the coachiness and convergence and boundary of the point like this. Okay? So, these problems you can just have a look okay? and then last problem is this, that is definition which I have already discussed. Thank you. Okay. Thanks.